Oh, I know. I am. I didn't even do any throws or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need it. I'm sorry. Did you sing or you have the song? What song? I don't know. 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 I don't Oh, oh, Lady Gaga? Yeah. Um, she's got a beautiful voice. I love her. Yeah. 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 Oh, she yeah. got the yeah. 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 But was it what was it? Yeah, okay. The app is Yeah, bring money. call to order the Seaside City of Seaside Community Safety Advisory Committee uh, on this afternoon. With that, we're going to take our roll. Uh, Chair Jones. Present. Uh, Vice Chair Thomas is excused. Commissioner Amarante. Here. Commissioner Velasquez. Here. Commissioner Foliaki. Here. And Commissioner Katz. Here. A quorum has been established. Thank you. Uh, we'll do, move to agenda item number three, review of the agenda. If there's any item that arose after the 72 hours <laughs> deadline, this is the point in the meeting where a vote may be taken to add the item to the agenda. Two thirds majority vote is required. Are there any commissioners that have anything to add to the agenda? All right. In favor, uh, no questions? Move the agenda as, as presented. I have a motion to approve the agenda. My motion we approve the agenda. I'll second. It has been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's, it's been approved. All right. Move strictly to public comments. Public comments is public comments for commissioners. Members of the public wishing to address the commission on matters within the jurisdiction of the city of Seaside, but not a, on this agenda, may do so during the public comment period for up to three minutes. Comments on specific agenda items are heard under that item for the public record. Please state your name. And while we're here on the public comments, due to recent events in which certain public comments at recent city meetings were deemed disruptive to the meeting because the words used were intended to insult demean, disrespect others, and were offensive to the media and could incite violence. Therefore, as chair, public comments will only be accepted in person during this meeting. You may also send an email with your comments that will be shared with the commissioners after this meeting and will be filed in the administrative record. These facts are also stated on the public agenda. For those making public comments in person, if your comments are deemed to be disruptive to the meeting, I request that you refrain from using them or similar language or you will be removed from this meeting. Thank you. And so we've approved the minutes. Um, we, we have our minutes from our last meeting. We have, right? Yes. Do we have any public comments? Okay. We have opened for public comments for items that are not on the agenda.
for that. Um, Chair Jones, it appears that we have no uh, items uh, for, under public comments at this time. Thank you. All right, public comments are now closed. We were looking to approve our uh, minutes from our last meeting. Uh, all commissioners have reviewed the minutes. Yes, a motion that we approve the minutes. I'll second. It's been moved and second that the minutes from our last meeting be approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any names? Minutes are approved. We're, we're moving quickly to our business item. And at this time, we're going to open for public comments to receive solutions, recommendations from community regarding fireworks. Again, community um, public comments is open and they are limited to three minutes. Yes, that's correct. Public comments is now open. Come on down, don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jen Gunter, and if we hadn't had the chance to meet yet, um, I was the associate pastor at Monterey Bay Christian Center for a couple years there, um, and don't live here in the community right now, but I'm still very, very connected and have my kids that still come and are invested and involved in everything going on. Um, I did want to um, keep my main comments tonight just to the point, uh, which is um, had some ideas for... Um, maybe ways to crack down on the illegal fireworks. Um, I know that Salinas um, charges her instance. So for instance, if there was a citation made for three fireworks, if somebody lit off three fireworks, they would be charged per firework. So they have three $1,000 fines. Um, that could be something. I know that getting a $1,000 fine in the mail, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I've heard it from people. They're like, ah, it's a thousand bucks. We all put in a hundred bucks. We're ready for it. You know, they don't care. Um, I've literally heard that from people. <laughs> um, and so my thought was that perhaps having multiple fines stacked on top of each other could be something that could be helpful because um, I believe that they're, and I might be wrong, but I heard that the limitation was like $36,000. So getting a, you know, getting a citation for something a lot larger might be beneficial. Um, and I don't know how um, those fees are collected, but I know that we've, you know, it was great this year that we were able to, you know, enforce more and submit more tickets and citations and things like that. But my question would be, um, is there a way to, you know, outside of just sending them to collections, because who knows if like those will actually get paid. Um, I guess the enforcement on how we actually do collect the fines and things from that um, would be part of my question also, um, that possibly getting some of those fines back might be helpful. And if people are actually forced to pay it, then there's, you know, there's a an investment in a, that cost, you know, I'm sorry, if it hurts my pocketbook, I'm not going to do it as much. So um, just a, a thought there. Um, and currently, we know that safe and sane can be used from um, the 28th to the 5th each year is what the sales and use is. Um, and uh, possibly we could shorten the time frame of the hours of use, um, maybe making it the 29th through the 4th and then shortening the time saying, hey, we're going to put um, a time restriction and say, you know, we're not going to light fireworks past 10 p.m. That gives us a shorter time frame and maybe not as late. Um, and we all know if you make safe and sane illegal, it makes everything illegal, which um, really just doubles the job of our police and takes away that extra surcharge. Um, you know, and so I just feel like if we can focus on getting recovering the funds from those citations and things like that, and maybe shortening hours and um, stacking stacking uh, the the citations, it might be helpful. So thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Ray Reardon. I'm a, a commissioner on the NIC commission, and but I'm here as a um, 
private citizen tonight. Um, it's not all about the 4th of July. It's about 366 days a year. It goes on and on and on. And uh, people are tired of it because safe and sane, everybody thinks it's those little things uh, going off. It's not. It's these, I, I, I when talk to my neighbor about it, $150 for one of these Canon things. Awesome to see, but it wasn't very healthy because we have another lady that has a uh, handicapped child that wigs out all the time. Okay, they've had to change his medicine numerous times. Isn't fair to him. She pays her tax, pays her taxes just like we all do. Um, and for us to support these charitable organizations, I haven't seen one charitable organization come to my door and try to sell me candy bars or this or that. I remember growing up, that's what we did. The churches did it outside in front of the church. They were selling things, cookies, homemade banana bread, things like that. Why does it become a city deal for us to support the churches in this town? Okay. I, I, I'm religious. I put my money in the coffer. But by George, I don't expect anybody else to give the money to our church. We support it. And I just don't understand that concept. And it's supposed to be a separation of government in that. Also, no one knows who's getting this money, what charitable organizations. We'd like to know that. Because it seems like someone's coming to the city council and asking for money all the time, or they can't pay their permits. Okay, Catholic Church pays $8,000. $8,000 for their little parade for the station of the cross. They don't come here begging to be relieved of that. They pay it. Everybody should pay it. It's skipping. Uh, the police department, they try their best, but it cost us money last year to try to stop the fireworks. Shouldn't cost me anything. I don't shoot them. I don't enjoy them. He shouldn't be out there jeopardizing his life over fireworks. And who says that he should be? It isn't, it isn't right. No other town's doing it. And why are we, let me use this word, stupid enough to keep doing it? Sorry about that. But one little kid got his fingers blown off this year, right? open and we're really listening for um, solutions or our ideas. Hello, uh, my name is Jimmy Cook. I'm with the Monterey Bay Christian Center. I'm the youth director and I run the, the booth down there. Um, so I'm not sure what I was going to come here to say, but I wanted to say something. I know in the past, I just want to say that I think the police department has been doing a good job this past year. I know you guys had a new plan, right? And there was, from what I could tell, there was more um, more citations than in the past. The new method was working good. So I think that's that's a plus. Um, I think maybe maybe over time we'll see more of an improvement. Maybe it takes a little longer to see a bigger improvement. Maybe that's one step. But um, canceling the the safe and sane, uh, I don't think that is like like we could do a different fundraiser. Of course, if it gets canceled, right, we'll have to do something else. I just think the only problem is is still going to be fireworks going off. Um, it's not going to change anything. All it's going to change is, um, you know, the impact we can make in the community for the, the for the kids, right? It's all about the kids. I mean, I I, I do it for free. You know, I don't get paid. Uh, I take a week or half off of work. I don't get vacation pay. 
And, um, but it's okay because it's worth it. <laughs> you know, the kids are worth it. It's worth the sacrifice. Um, it, it funds our, our program for the whole year. You know, we help a little Seaside High, maybe do some dinners, bring some pieces of the FCA club, uh, take kids to camp, uh, conventions, all our events throughout the whole year. Um, but, uh, I mean, we paid like 16 plus thousand dollars in taxes also. So that I think helps the fighting. I, I don't know. I just think the curfew might help. I know we've done it in the past. The it was like 10 p.m. Um, because then everything's illegal. You know, we tell everybody 10 p.m. or you get a ticket, you know, then it doesn't matter who's out there at midnight, they could have a morning glory or they could have a mortar, it's still gonna be a fine. Um, maybe you want to scale that for a morning glory or a mortar, but <laughs> But that that could be a deterrent for sleepless nights. I know it bothers me too. You know, even though I like fireworks, we're laying in bed, you know, in the middle of of uh, August or September, and then there's explosions going off. It sounds like somebody's house blew up. But that's not us. We only get safe and sane for like six and a half days out of the year because we can't start till noon, and everything else is illegal. Even the even the safe and sane, you know. We only get six and a half days. So I think um, maybe being more proactive towards stopping the illegal and not worrying about the safe and sane, because I don't think that'll I don't think that'll change anything. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Carla Lobo. I co-chair the SAFE uh, Association with a couple of other uh, residents in the city of Seaside. Um, this has been a, a dire subject matter for quite some time now. And um, the recommendations that we had in August from the police department and the fire department were great. Um, this, having this setting is great so that we can really hash out what we want to see as a whole. This week alone, there was an explosion, I believe two days ago. I don't know if anybody else heard it. Um, so they're still going on. And so my first recommendation is to put this on the 2024 ballot. And I say that because we need to give the power and the voice back to the people. Um, this also gives way for negotiations. Um, a previous uh, commenter at one of the city council meetings mentioned corporate America. This is a great opportunity to negotiate with the um, fireworks companies to either fund more our churches or nonprofits that are being able to sustain um, intricate programs that we have here in the city of Seaside. This is a great opportunity to have them cash out if they really want this in our city. Put the um, accountability back on these corporates instead of it the, of them dividing us as a community. Um, you know, this again, this is a dire subject that we hear consistently. And so when we have outside entities that do not control the people's budget telling us how we should control the budget, um, and then alluding to us against them and them against us and then us against our own police and fire is, is not a cohesive community. Uh, it's not about whether we support churches or nonprofits or whether we support our police department. It's whether we support our community. Giving it to the people, it gives them a voice. And not only that, it gives the nonprofits and our churches an opportunity to negotiate for more money. So it's a win-win across the board. If we're looking at recommendations, the recommendations, some of the recommendations that uh, we heard at the August um, city council meeting was great. And some of the recommendations we hear here tonight are great as well. Some that I have would encompass perhaps only selling through the period of the celebration that we're having. And then only to those, only the, the, the organizations that are already buying in now and then have that collaboration with the city to see if we can take on some of that brunt as far as financial. We've already given um, over a hundred thousand for a community block uh, grant. And so adding that to it will also 
um, alleviate the 25,000 that we get on surcharges. So my first recommendation would be put it on the ballot, let the people speak, um, depending on what that happens, then have um, another follow-up. If it works that we ban or don't ban, however that comes out to the polls, let it speak, and then take on the next level of commitment, mean, meaning that let's see if this works for a year, if it's a go or if it's not, and then bring it back for discussion. Um, I think that gives the opportunity for the community to have a say, and I apologize for taking more time. Hello, my name is, uh, let me move this up a little bit. Hi, my name is James Valdez. I'm from Monterey Bay, Monterey Bay Christian Center. I serve alongside Jimmy Cook. Um, I really just do want to appreciate what the SAFE Association has brought. However, in bringing this to a ballot measure and a yes or no vote, I, I just honestly think that it's too costly for the city to even entertain. Um, the split between the corporate America and the nonprofits is actually down the middle, 50-50. So it's actually a very high split that, that the churches and the nonprofits are getting more than any other fundraiser that that we would have available to us should this go and, and be and safe and sane be voted against. So I just want that to bring to your own consideration. It's a 50, 50% split between the corporation and the nonprofits with a 7% surcharge. So that's um, also money to the city that, that, that the city is looking to um, lose out on as well if this is, if safe and sane is taken out. Um, also, I do just want to just appreciate um, your guys' time for coming out and hearing all of us and how we really feel about about the fireworks. And it's so distressing to find out about an explosion, but that is not what this is about. This is about safe and sane fireworks. And really, honestly, like if we're going to talk about safe and sane fireworks, then really, what do we do about that? And how do we better manage and fund our hunt for illegal fireworks. And I really just want to echo what Ms. Gunter mentioned last week, that we give the, the city time. The task force was, was alluded to, and we need to give the city manager time to really enact what he knows how to do. Um, I know I still have about a minute, but that's it. I yield the rest of my time. Good evening, Peter Kaiser, longtime resident of Seaside. So um, I'm glad we had those comments in the previous city council meetings and a lot of interesting suggestions. And um, I think we should also look at some at the bigger picture a little bit. So how are the illegal fireworks getting here? In other words, <laughs> we have an administration in Washington that likes an open border. The, Mr. Biden just sold $200 million worth of border construction materials for like $20,000 just to get rid of them. So he didn't have to worry about, oh, you're not using the material for the border. Most countries don't have open borders like we do. We maybe have 20 million people have been coming in. And of course, they bring in fentanyl. We have some of the highest deaths for fentanyl in, in the history of this country. And they're just walking through, they're flying over, they're, they're driving around the, the fences. Some of them actually drive their car up to a small fence and just jump over it. So we need to have a closed border. And this has been mentioned before. So we need to have an administration that's willing to close the southern border of California, at least. We also need to stop. We need to search the containers that are coming into our harbors and some of the fishing boats are probably bringing in the illegal fireworks even to, even into Monterey Harbor besides illegal drugs. So if we have a, a wide open border and we're complaining about illegal things, there's a disconnect there. So you need to influence Mr. Biden and the administration. We need to close the border. So that that's that's important. Um, <laughs> And then also, um, 
I've been to some very good high fireworks programs at Fort Ord in the old days. Now, one problem was the fog. The fog would be so low that the fireworks would go up above the clouds and then you couldn't see the fireworks. You just felt a little stuff coming on your head. But fire uh, community fireworks programs are a really good idea. So that means that people are at this fireworks from maybe uh, 4th of July afternoon into the evenings. They're having, they're buying things and they're having a good time. I watched the ones down at, uh, it, wow, down at the Harbor in Monterey. That's very important. And these go, the, the money, the profits from the sale of the safe and sane. The safe and sane is not the problem. It shouldn't be on the ballot. Taking away safe and sane isn't going to solve anything. So we need to have those programs. To, I remember one group gets about $50,000 and it helps uh, the less, less um, affluent children to go to camp and, and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. So we don't really need this on the ballot because the safe and sane is not the problem. So let's stop the illegals coming in and more um, tougher enforcement. Thank you. Good evening, uh, commissioners. My name is Bobby Maxwell, and this thing is not stained, but anyway. Um, illegal fireworks are not just around the 4th of July. They're pretty much year-round. Um, and the problem with the fireworks is not the little sparklers and, and stuff that uh, people shoot off around the 4th of July. It's the illegal fireworks. But the illegal fireworks that are being shot off hide behind the safe and sane fireworks. It's hard for the police to enforce uh, do enforcement on the illegals because they hide behind the safe and sane. And thank you, Chief, for the great job you and your department and also the fire department has done in the past. Although they were pretty much uh, bashed by the civil grand jury, that was just a travesty in its own right. Um, we have an election coming up, a general election and a strategy to maximize participation in the ultimate decision while minimizing the cost to the city would be to add this item to the November 2024 ballot, since voter turnout is significantly higher during that election. And a citizens group, SAFE, is already coalescing toward that goal with or without the council. So I hope that you make a recommendation to our council to help to make that happen. So thank you for your time and I yield the rest of my time. Good evening. Hi, I am Shannon Burrow. I'm the children's director at Monterey Bay Christian Center, and I just want to tell you what Safe Saint does. We have been able, since COVID, to help 100 families who don't have housing have Christmas and Thanksgiving. That specifically does not come out of our ties, does not come out of our budget. It comes out of the fireworks. And I commend Chief. He has done a fantastic job in the last two years supporting us and keeping us safe. There's less, there are, I hear less booms now than I did when I first got here. When I moved here, it was like every night you heard them, but you've done a fantastic job. And I thank you for that. And I know you will make the right decision because you're, you're wise and you listen to everyone. And I just pray that you listen to everybody's hearts. It's not, it's not, he said, this said, we just want to keep everybody safe. 
but we also want to make Seaside great and our residents safe and healthy and have great a life. And like I said, the fines might be good. You know, if you hear a boom go off every month, maybe just charge like for January when we know that they're going to be celebrating, give them a $2,000 fine. And then in April, give them a thousand dollar fine. And then in Jan July, in June, and August, give them five thousand dollar fine. Because it could be a sliding bill. Because that way they'll be like, ooh, I can't do that. That's a five thousand dollar fine. There'll be less to do that. And I yield my time and thank you so much for listening to our hearts. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Diane Nielsen. I'm a Seaside resident. Um, I first wanna appreciate you for taking input from citizens and uh, about ideas to help solve this issue. I don't think it'll ever be solved, but maybe we can make it better. And I appreciate all the nonprofits, uh, including churches who are helping young people one thing I would like to see is all fireworks banned in the city, uh, safe and sane, not sold in our city anymore. Many cities are not selling them anymore. And I would suggest to the uh, nonprofits and churches to ask people in the same uh uh, ministers to ask other ministers and church members what they do instead of selling safe and sane fireworks to make their money to support their programs. Um, it's kind of proven that it's just too big of an issue trying to stop people from shooting off illegal fireworks. I mean, we just can't control it that well. And it's nobody's fault except the people that are doing it. Um, if we have too many rules and regulations, like stop at 10 o'clock or, you know, just let the safe and sane go and look for illegal fireworks or different rules and regulations that the police have to enforce, it's, it's not going to work. There isn't going to, they're not going to be able to handle it. And, um, one of the major things I'm concerned with is the environmental detriment that it does uh, with the safe and sane or illegal. But this, if you ever notice the amount of smoke and debris that is caused and chemicals by safe and sane fireworks, you would be amazed. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it around your neighborhood. It's bad for people with asthma or breathing problems. Um, let's see what else I personally would like to see them all banned, but at the least I would like to be, see, see it put on the ballot and I would hope that they would be banned that way, but whatever the people want, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Bill Weigel, Seaside resident. Um, I recommend two things. One is that, that you recommend that it be put on the ballot so that since everybody has a stake in this, the citizens of Seaside can decide whether or not they want fireworks. And I wouldn't say all fireworks. The second thing is clearly what we're hearing is that there are a lot of organizations, primarily churches, and children's support organizations that need the financial support that they get from fireworks. I hope they get them from other things too. 
But I suggest the other thing you do in, in the way of solutions is help find solutions so that they can still get the money they need, but that it doesn't come from the sale of fireworks. Thank you. Hello, Commissioners. Uh, Kay Klein, Seaside resident. Ever since I've moved here in 89, uh, there have been a lot of fireworks going off in the city. And I know I have a friend who moved out of the city because of the fireworks. I know a lot of people who leave the city because their animals get frantic during the 4th of July. I know that people with health problems and the elderly have trouble with the fireworks. So. I'm requesting them to be put on the ballot just so we can really find out how people in this city, the voters, feel about it. And for me, that would be very informative to know what people think. And if people vote to continue with the fireworks, then I think we can work on solutions. Um, but if not, then I think as a city, we need to look hard at how we can support our local organizations that are doing so much for our families. Thank you. Joan Costello, Seaside resident and uh, commissioner on the neighborhood improvement, but I'm speaking for myself. Um, I, I would love to ban all fireworks safe and sane, but at least put it on the ballot. My major concern is uh, fire and trash. I, I'm one of those on the 4th of July. I've got the hose in hand. You know, I'm ready. And the day after, I clean up all over the neighborhood, and it's a mess. That's all I yield the rest of my time. No further public comment. Probably mm -hmm. looking to close public comments at this time. The purpose of having this uh, meeting or this, um, this community uh, a, a meeting is to receive the suggestions of the community so that we, the Safety Advisory Committee, can make recommendations to the City Council as well as to hear your voice. Um, I, we think it's very important that we hear the voice of the citizens of Seaside so that we can properly uh, um, say to the city council or to, to whoever, um, this is what we are hearing from the city, from the citizens of Seaside. Um, at this time, I'm gonna give way to the commissioners to have. Folks, thank you so much for coming tonight. We've been looking at this issue and we need your input. I just, we're, we're here once a month if you wanna join us. It's open. We have email. Okay. Uh, we have been, you know, restricted a little bit with the Zoom stuff, but please send your information in. Send your, you know, you don't have to agree with anybody else. If you want to be anonymous, send it in that way. But uh, we really appreciate your interaction with us. We've been silent today so we could listen. And I've heard a lot of stuff that I really appreciate what you said. Thank you. Yep. Before, let me, I'm so sorry. We didn't even introduce ourselves and we don't have name tags either. <laughs> I, I just I just realized that we didn't even introduce the committee. I didn't introduce the commissioner and we don't have name tags. Um, but we are the Safety Advisory Committee. We have been in, in um, a, a committee for the last year and a half. Uh, I am uh, Pastor Eugene Jones, uh, pastor of the Emmanuel Church of God in Christ here in Seaside, chairman of the Safety Advisory Committee. And so, um, and, and so I'm going to let the other commissioners introduce themselves as we move. I'm a longtime resident here of the city of Seaside. Uh, we, I've lived in, in, this, in the city of Seaside for over 40 years. And so we have raised our family here and uh, very committed and connected to this community. So we're, we're very happy to be here and I'm happy to serve in this role. 
My name is Alan Katz. I'm a seaside resident. Uh, my wife and I moved here about 10 years ago from Florida. You might be able to pick up the accent. Uh, we love it here. And uh, I'm just uh, proud to be part of this commission. My name is Malika Velasquez. I grew up here. I am a Seaside High graduate. Um, we moved here from South Central when I was a little girl due to the military. And um, I've always loved this city. Um, yeah, I think that's... Oh, um, I'm also on the MPUSD school board. So I'm your new school board member. Um, and uh, am, I, I am also a special needs mom. Um, so I did identify with some of the people that spoke tonight. And I, again, want to thank everyone for coming out. We really do value your input. My name is Tony Amaranti, and I thank everybody for being here this evening. I've only been a resident of Seaside since uh, 2020, but uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, everything I own is on the corner of Wanda Avenue and Kenneth Street, and I'm happy to help out in my community. And thank you for this privilege. Good evening, Seaside community. My name is Kaylin Fuliaki. I'm 23 years of age um, and a lifelong resident of the city of Seaside. My family is going on 50 years here, um, proud resident. Um, and just thank you all for being here um, and voicing um, all of uh, that was said today. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. And as you see, the commissioners are, are fully and fully vested in the city of Seaside. And this um, issue of fireworks or, you know, we don't have a really opinion, but we needed to hear the community's opinion. And so, so that we can make a, a proper recommendation to the city council. Thank you. Now we're moving to uh, agenda item number seven, report from commissioners. No report. No report at this time. I don't have anything to report this evening. No report. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll move to our report from staff. No report. Thank you. I, even though staff has no report, uh, Chief, would you just like to greet the community on this morning, on this afternoon? Thank you, Commissioners Nick Forges, Police Chief here in Seaside. Uh, I just want to echo and thank the community for coming here. I know there's been a strong demand to have uh, to hear from our community. We've been meeting for a year and a half, and behind the scenes, it doesn't always come out publicly. This has been one of the biggest topics that we just set as an agenda item for quite some time and trying to figure these things out. So I, I do appreciate some of the things we heard tonight and some of the things we are already doing. I think one of the first speakers talked about um, in, if you see multiple booms coming from a residence, we, we do that. We've done that this year. Um, our city attorney is working on a variety of different ways to get people to pay these fines. And I believe if my numbers are accurate, I believe we reported there were six, six of the citations administratively that we issued. It was around 50 have already paid and the city attorney is issuing multiple letters and working very diligently to find different ways to get folks to pay these things. Uh, for me, that's of the uh, something new, because historically, when we had a $2,500 fine, my understanding is zero people paid those. So it did only encourage people to continue to, with the illegal fireworks. Um, so again, I just want to uh, thank our community. And, and again, my suggestion is always very basic. I try to keep to uh, common sense and what's simple. And a lot of the public do, do, don't know this. Some do. We have implemented ways this last year where we're not just issuing criminal citations where you have to put your name down and be a witness and go to court and sign a citation. We do that as well. We also do on view if we see it and we have an address, we'll, we'll cite people as well. We also have an administrative citation that's supported. That's our fine, $1,000. And you can remain anonymous. You, all you have to do is let us know. Uh, there's a gentleman I spoke with recently who was very frustrated and said, my neighbor at this house is constantly lighting fireworks and you guys never show up. You never do anything. And I have researched these calls. Uh, 
most of the time we're not getting a call at all from this particular gentleman. And when we do get calls, there's nothing specific to say anything other than I live in this area. I heard an explosion. I'm letting you guys know. If you tell us where this is and you don't want to you know, be named, we're going to go and investigate and we're going to issue administrative citations. And our city attorney has been committed to trying to enforce these things. It is a big issue, but um, look, but look behind me. Our, our residents, they care. They want this to be, they want this to be at least to come to a compromise. And again, I, I don't want to take any credit. We're trying very hard, but this is really a city solution. Uh, it, it was really led by new ideas from our city manager, our mayor, our council, really pushing behind on this. I say there's been a slight reduction in fireworks. And I say that very carefully because it doesn't matter what, what, what I'm saying. If you hear an explosion, if you hear one boom next to your residence, that is enough to say that's the worst year you've ever had. Your whole house shook and it shocked you. Your heart rate went up. It's unfair for me to say that, but I say it because I'm looking at the facts of the case. We're not there yet. I don't, I don't need any credit for anything. The department doesn't. And, and by the way, I just want to alert the public. The reason I had police officers come to join this meeting for twofold. Number one, I want them to hear the community as well and not just hear things secondhand from me. But number two, there has been a lot of tension uh, publicly, nationally. There was a, a mass shooting the other day, and I want the public to feel at ease that you can have a meeting and know that we're here to make sure everybody's feeling safe. So that's why the police were in the room. Um, I want to keep working with our community. We're, we're going to take baby steps. If we can take bigger steps, we will. But we're doing something about this. And somebody had mentioned the civil grand jury. I appreciate the civil grand jury's input. But again, uh, in part, I was somewhat offended by some of the comments because there were things we were already doing. And there were things that are just impossible to do. I can't control a, a company that's a multi-million dollar company and have them create technology and follow them and track them. That's not They're, they're doing that on their own. But anyhow, we support that because it did bring good attention to Seaside, and Seaside's always going to respond to that and try to get better. So uh, I appreciate it. appreciate you all, and um, we'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate you. Again, we thank all of the community for coming out on tonight and for sharing with us your concerns and your recommendations. We highly, highly appreciate it. And as, as the Chief has said, all of our commissioners said, we have been uh, hashing this out between, on, on each of our commission meetings, commissioners meeting, and then, but, but we finally decided, to, let's just hear what the community said. We all have our, our ears in our different neighborhoods and our different community, but we want to hold a forum where everybody could come and, and could um, give us recommendation as to what we can recommend, recommend to the city council uh, for, um, so that we can, we can be better. As a city, we're better together, and I think that we can all work together so that we can come to a good conclusion of this matter. And I just just believe that, that Seaside is just the best city in all the world, because I live here. <laughs> I just think it's the best city. And, I, and, and again, I, I know the chief never wants to receive a lot of accolades, but the police, Seaside Police Department is doing an excellent job. Yeah. And they're doing an excellent, excellent job. And I, I'm, I'm very proud. Uh, to be a part, um, to be associated with them, even working with them on this committee. Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to uh, um, move for an adjournment. I move to adjourn. <laughs> I second the motion. It has been moved and second that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, water. We're trying. Hey, water. Oh, we have to put it on in a